Uh, uh, good, uh, mm. uh, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, uh, coming. Yuri Melnichik is my name. Uh, I used to be a programmer, but there's no such thing as a, as a former programmer. I'll talk about the marketing of mobile applications as seen by an engineer. Uh, so can you raise uh, hands those who have Sakura uh, application from organizers? Oh, almost everyone. So if you have any questions, so please uh, so use this uh, application and uh, ask your questions. Some of them I answer today and then uh, later later I will answer those which I will not be able to do to answer now. Uh, mm. yeah, it's only for Android and iOS. Uh, Anyways, we can always ask questions like that. Mm. Mm. I, as a former, I'm a former programmer. In 2010, I quit on uh, on Google and I started my startup. Uh, I, uh, and we started to do offline maps. So now they're called maps. And uh, it took us a year to do the first application, then put it in the store. So they got some users and then it turned out that you need to be involved in promotion and marketing mobile applications. So now just uh, we have a marketing director, but since I handled all the company, so I studied this subject very well because I needed to understand how marketing works. And then now just I would like to tell you about the mobile uh, applications marketing. So the way it looks for the developer, what simple things you can use to develop, to promote your application. Before we talk about marketing, let's, uh, let's look at the big picture. What do, do we want just to get from a mobile application? So let's say, for example, you want to, in future, you want just to make money on uh, commercials. Then then all the time that you have, all the users to spend in the application. So I can just break it down by number of people who installed your application. So times retention, yeah, times retention, continue to use your application, uh, times uh, daily usage. Uh, so how many times a day you, they use your application? Could be point 0.1 or 1 or 2 times and then times uh, average session time. So if we just multiply it all, this we get the total amount of time that, that the mankind spends in your application. So if you monetize it, and then you can just figure out a certain uh, factor, and uh, then, then you can multiply it and turn it into money. And you can see that this uh, aggregate, uh, 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 so then the increase of each by two uh, increases, increases the aggregate result the sum total and uh, so since we are being pressed for time so I is so how to how to instead how to increase the installed base how to attract more people to your application and that's a challenge because currently uh, web store and Google Play more than 1.5 million applications in each and it means that your application that you just issued and added so you need to be you need to differentiate it somehow. Mm. How can you differentiate it? And then attracting new users uh, for for an application, so it gets uh, more expensive every year by thirty percent. So every three years, so uh, to uh, 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 to market it every three years, it it, it goes up one hundred percent. And uh, so let's see just what steps uh, we need to. We need to take uh, before we get into your your present uh, your application. Uh, did anyone hear about graph? Your graph. Uh, good. So it means that uh, we we know this kind of graph. So someone could he hear about your application from the news, from your friend, from his friends, advertising, commercials, uh, from any site, or just went to an app store just to play with it and then found this little application. And almost all these sources. Uh, so you need to get to the. Uh, uh, to to the Apple Apple Store App App Store sorry so you need to get to App Store how to attract more people to the App Store so this is the critical so this is the App Store the critical moment the moment of truth so when you move from the App Store to the installation this is the most important part uh, the most important part of it because here uh, 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 so then. Uh, so your chances immediately go up twice. So all promotion channels to make a nice app store. You don't have to invest a lot to make a nice app store uh, 
page. Uh, um, and this we need to understand people. So that's why you need just to attract people to the App Store uh, uh, page. So what is an App Store page? Uh, what, what, is a, what is a product page? So this is a screenshot in Google Play. So an App Store and uh, screenshot. What does it consist of? So the name of the app. And then, uh, uh, for example, so that maps me, that's maps me, that's my application. So it need to explain to someone who never heard about you, never saw you before, just came on your page uh, uh, by mistake, accidentally. So this, uh, they don't trust you. So what is this all about? What is it? And uh, so we have this maps me, maps me. This is our application, An offline map, GPS navigation map, etc. Then there is another uh, so point because the name, the the name, the name actually ch uh, influences the ch uh, the search engine optimization in the App Store. Then the icon. Many people are visuals, uh, so they don't read, and uh, so they look visually, and so that the icon should be very attractive. So the icon should communicate the idea what your application is all about. <coughs> very important. We had a small startup. We spoke about off offline cards or maps uh, for travelers. We had uh, so then big big suitcase. Something I take with you uh, for travel. Now it's all uh, too uh, obsolete, and now uh, we need to change uh, this icon for something more geographic, something like a pin. Next rating. Rating lots of applications. Uh, so low quality applications, uh, highly monetized, very poorly made. People don't trust them. With low rating, have to have high rating. How to make a high rating? We'll talk about that. Screenshots. As I was saying, many people uh, uh, look visually things. They like visual. They look with their eyes. You know, that takes time before it's downloaded. They want to see what this is all about before they download it. So because they don't trust you. And so that's why they go for a screenshot. It should be made. Then description. Description no one reads. No one reads a description. So you can just look at app application. First screen as I open up. No, no even description. You need to go near to scroll down. There is a small font there. Like in advertising. So a small font. No all conditions. So the same way. So no one reads. So Google's a little bit softer. So they just they just describe it in two lines. So they never show more than two lines. That's it. That's the definition. Size. So now, so one very important point. So if your application is more than 100 megabytes, and in iOS, in Android, so the user will think it's too heavy, too big. Oh, it's more than 100 pages. Only Wi-Fi, 3G. It will take up all your traffic, and then conversion immediately drops. People don't want to download too big. There was a bug recently because of the bug. There was a bug, uh, a mistake in the program, so the script of the. Uh, so our application became one. One release was more than 100 megabytes. And we didn't see it on iOS, there was no reduction. But in Android, so without changing anything, so we immediately we lost we lost 30% of all the users who visited our application. Android, so 30% less downloads. That's it. And then price is very important. It's super important. Because to pay for digital uh, applications, they know no one wants to uh, pay. And if it's you have to pay, then immediately uh, this is sometimes uh, the credit card is not connected to the shop. People cannot even pay, even if they wanted to. And uh, so if it was you had to pay, and people I cannot, I cannot pay for it. So can I just send you money in envelope? You see for your application. So it's, uh, there is no connection. So uh, so they either do it uh, uh, for free, and then inside they just try to sell, or the models migrate uh, to uh, commercials and, and advertising component. Because even in, and uh, for example, or even if the stores, it's embedded. So that this application, in spite of the fact that it's uh, free, so maybe it will sell you something. Try to attempt to, to sell you something. That will that will reduce the conversion as well. Okay, now how how can we improve all this? So the main, uh, we need to test. We need to test. That's the only way to do it. In Google Play, we have already you know, embedded a B testing. What is B testing? Do you know what? It's already embedded, almost everyone, but not 100%. So A-B testing is when uh, you you want to change anything, uh, for example, the page of your product. And uh, and uh, for s a small number of users, they don't use they, they don't show A option but B option. Then you can see the statistics how well people download it in A version and B version, and you take the one which sells better. I mean, uh, they download it more. That's it. So there are many many logical things. 
or so because you think oh this will be so if I add this little feature it will it will be downloaded better but all of a sudden in B testing A testing it doesn't help so they say no need to do that so the, so testing the code like you test the code you need to test the marketing component the same way for App Store uh, no AB uh, embedded AB testing no AB testing testing so there are providers that do it through hacking so split matrix uh, test net uh, test nest uh, co they do it we used to use them but then we n now we do it only on google play and then and then we decided on iphone it will be the same so we just assume it's almost the same mm. so localization uh, localization very simple thing how to bring the uh, user closer and uh, is uh, uh, is to translate it into another language in many languages uh, uh, so then uh, there are fewer localized uh, uh, applications you will send sell uh, if we launch a new localization immediately in this localization so the users increase the number immediately even if it's poorly translated they would not understand what it means so even if this, uh, this localization is not okay so then but if you just even if you poorly even a poorly launched localization works then query for uh, uh, for feedback they will try just to figure out when the person is loyal and you and they and you ask him just to evaluate your uh, because it increases the rating of applications so, so we'll talk more about that uh, so then the feedback request so then the most uh, is to make a good quality product this is the most the best way to increase downloads what about the feedback request so since the requests are very important we know that uh, that there are lots of different applications always ask uh, for uh, for a feedback so that so let me show you how we cheat a little bit uh, so we need just to find a guy who is uh, when when he's not very busy in inside the application he says get away from me uh, scram and just I want to uh, uh, so uh, please uh, uh, rate so it's one from four and we ask to uh, enter a moment uh, so comment and then it goes into our email and then and then support starts to talk what is it that can be improved if you don't like it so much it's only three but if he sets five stars so we put him on the store and for iOS page uh, on the, the page uh, which gives him a chance to once again to give a feedback back light in the app store so to do it again it's, it's a slight che cheating but everyone does that so it's only three and then we talk to support if it's five and go straight to the uh, to the app store and at the same time uh, everyone just uh, so help the, the, to resolve the problems and uh, get the support guy to talk to the customer and that helps him and everyone is happy at the same time it, it gives you an additional chance to evaluate your evaluate your application better mm -hmm, to assess it uh, now so since uh, the texts uh, no one is reading texts uh, but we need just to convey this message what this app does right and uh, so what we do we write text on screenshots right big offline maps available worldwide yes our competitors a wonderful map look at this so it doesn't look that it's pretty but this is it you don't even see that it's a map it's something else but it's very successful popular subject matter uh, uh, finished templates then you put just screenshots in the phone I don't think it, it works because people get used to it and it doesn't work and they just roll them the screenshots that's why I appeal to you if you if you are in promotion of applications uh, so uh, make sure that that the screenshots should be in different formats and read differently and every next one should be of interest uh, so this is a uh, down and this us and on top uh, our competitors so now uh, now App Store App Store very good channel to bring more users <laughs> And some things work, some things don't. Yeah, so featureings work the best. So when Apple or Google collects or takes your application into a separate category, so the best application 2015 made in Russia for travelers by September the 1st. So this is wonderful. Mm. So many featureings. Um, yeah, so Google and App Store. We need to try to get in there. How to get in there? To make a good quality application. And in Russia, in Moscow, so we have representatives of Apple and Google. They they do business with uh, uh, with developers, and they're ready to help Russian developers to move into the international market. To go so then they try to talk to all good applications. We can talk to them. We can tell how how wonderful application you have, and why it generates lots of value uh, to our and their users. 
and Google doesn't do much many featurings instead of featuring so they started to uh, uh, was, was, uh, so that the, 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 the uh, so the friends uh, it, it the friends liked it so they said five stars for example so they started to reflect those uh, 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 people uh, 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 the, the friends of the user of the application so they reflect them so and then the search uh, in the app store so there was a search engine of optimization so there is app store optimization now and uh, uh, so but uh, it's very important too mm. then pops um, uh, uh, tops uh, uh, top when we started we had this idea so if you get into the top everyone sees you you're visible everyone downloads you and then the application starts to fly so it doesn't work that way anymore and uh, mm, uh, uh, why? Because Apple and Google, they moved tops uh, into a distant corner. Yeah, they are difficult to find them, and people don't see the tops. Uh, why? Uh, because there was this uh, uh, way of business when botnets uh, created uh, fake iOS uh, uh, Android users, and uh, so they raised tops for money, and this was kind of black marketing. Spent money on it, uh, so that is why tops became congested with trash. And not uh, not real useful things. And then Google Apple started to address it, and Apple went into featuring, and uh, Google went into uh, uh, into showing uh, applications that the social context like. Hmm, that's it. And uh, so the idea to get into the top, uh, uh, it it doesn't work properly. It doesn't fly. There is another uh, way that doesn't work well, but it's free. So if you uh, if you update your application, add new features. Uh, updated, updated, and every time you update it, you can see so there is a little spike of customers, and it's not much, but it doesn't cost us anything. Okay, App Store optimization. It looks like SEO, SEO, which we had during web times. Uh, so the name of the application is very important. So when someone just uh, so types in the search, uh, so the top the key the keywords are in the name. So and the, and the length is limited, so it immediately comes up, very popular. You know? So if you open App Store, so why the applications are with very long names? Because they're trying just to put as much keywords as possible. But Google did what? So they put just 31 symbol, that's it, no problem, no more than that. No longer than that, keywords. When you send a key, when a, an application to the store, you have to identify key stores. Doesn't work very well, but works. Anglia said gives you some of the keywords uh, in the store. Uh, you can find them in the feedback or in description. But there are some instruments, so sensor power and mobile actions, so they're dedicated to help the application to promote itself uh, in in uh, in uh, in App Store. How you arrange in search, uh, they, they helps you to find good words for your application. Does a lot of analytics. So then there is Google AdWords, AdWords that that helps to find words for a web. And but they're good for mobile as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few more, a few more words that are free. So worked for us, though they are free. So to do the uh, iPhones rule uh, overview, or put it put it on Product Hunt or, or Habr Habr. Uh, so this uh, cheap and uh, gives good effect. So then there are some video video bloggers. They do the uh, the, uh, the overviews of applications. So locally it works well. Uh, blogs on your application uh, that has to do with your application. So we're talking about navigation. That was only had to do with travel. Worked very well. Whenever bloggers uh, in travel spoke about us, uh, wrote about us, you don't have to uh, to uh, pay them. <coughs> Just ask them. Can you do an overview about offline cards? Can you do that? So if you want to do that, that's the key to your application. It will be free for you because I want you to make an overview. Since we were confident about the quality of our products, so we always we didn't pay anything. And then the guy just wrote a good feedback. And uh, so that was a good advertising. So giving him the key, free for him. And then, then uh, so when this product becomes more useful is if his friends use this. So this peer pressure, this actually just uh, attracting friends. Then virus mechanics in the product, uh, for example. So when they were just uh, reducing price for zero, when it was fee pay, so they tell our, all our users, all their friends, uh, look that this application has become free. It worked. Social networks immediately. So team just just downloads uh, while it's still free, so download it. And so reducing price uh, worked well until Apple started to fight it. <laughs> In Google, if you bring it out to zero, you cannot erase it. And in Webull, it worked, uh, this technology. And then Apple started to, to fight it and started to cover the applications uh, uh, to st uh, 
uh, so that 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 that, that spoke uh, to the users about what became free as well. But it could be a good experiment. And eventually, I wanted to mention that uh, we spoke about one very important uh, uh, metrics, uh, mm, uh, but there is another one which uh, depends on your product. Uh, but that's a different story. Thank you very much. Another way of uh, app marketing. So just I downloaded it and I liked it already. So while I was listening, so I downloaded it. Uh, effectively, uh, uh, it's not worth the uh, it's not worth the uh, the effort. Uh, mm. Okay, questions. Thank you for uh, the presentation. As A B testing, uh, you said that uh, uh, you used it for App Store by someone else's services. We avail you availed yourself of this service. Why did you abandon this practice? Why didn't you do? Uh, so then, uh, A B testing. The idea of A B testing was you need to. Uh, so how those services work? So they show the uh, uh, the you the user so web page in the browser that looks identical to App App Store. That's how services work. And then you need just to bring the people in there somehow. And by promotion, by advertising campaign, you can do that. But when you test at Google Play, when it's native, and uh, so it, it's not only the people for whom you uh, advertise this application, the entire sampling. So who came by chance, who those who friends told me, someone in search, just a uh, kid it in. And uh, so this uh, sampling is a uh, two ten percent uh, of the total sampling of, of the users. And uh, so for this, uh, we decided to abandon uh, uh, so the uh, uh, using those services and the big the big name. It's good in, 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 in the App Store and it helps uh, to search for applications. But I think that the users should be uh, should be scared uh, by long names. We did A-B testing with long names, uh, long description. And we did uh, A-B testing and we tested Maps.me, offline maps, and Maps.me offline maps, blah, blah, blah. We did that. And Maps.me offline maps worked the best. Uh, worked the best. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's better not too long and not too short, right? Yeah, the fact the difference is minimal. Uh, so the be uh, what worked best is the name, with the name of the product, or what this product is all about. A little bit worse, but it's uh, very long. But uh, what you needed for ISO, uh, because we had uh, the heated debates of whether we need it or not. And then uh, the worst, when it's only maps me, that's it, because no one understands what maps me means. That's, that's the worst option. Question about uh, 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 rating. Mm. So is there spe special rules? Uh, so you, uh, to what extent you like this this application, and uh, and and how to what extent we can improve? So we can put five because you can even improve it worse, uh, uh, more improve it more. Uh, so it's kind of contradictory. Uh, so how can we improve the app? Uh, it's uh, uh, it's ambiguous, ambiguous, because I didn't communicate this idea. So the idea is that if if a person uh, puts three, two, or one. So then the different questions come up um, here. And then the question has comes up. And then there's comment field, right? Your comment field. And as for the design, the, be the better design would be if the question were more put closer to the comment field. Yes, okay. So I understand. Yes, so two questions are asked and only one uh, answer comes. All right. So the idea was that how can we improve the app? So if, uh, and if he presses the button, he sends. Uh, it's a sense to, to support, uh, uh, and then we interact with the guy uh, so from support. And so, can we do that? Is it doable? Not doable? Better not to do it, etc. So, but, uh, is, it is it something standard? Or well, each person can do whatever he or she likes. This is a gift from Mail.ru group. When we started part of Mail.ru group, uh, uh, we saw this thing and we took it. Mm. It's not a rating of Google or Apple, no, not at all. But if we get five, so we don't see comment, no field for comment, and we press a button and send it to App Store, App Store, where a person can get its rating. So it's a sort of a trick, yes, yes. But it's state of the art for most mobile apps. Uh, where did you take the maps from? From Mail.ru? Maps 
from the open street map community like wikipedia for maps free maps global community uh, trying to build the best in the world map open and free i know uh, a thing in the google the number of uh, uh, resolutions for instance if uh, well when I saw the number of uh, ah, and also permissions, permissions. How many permissions you have to provide the Google with? Uh, when I see a long list of permissions, well, I usually do not install. I do not download. Load. Yes, it depends on the audience. We have an audience a bit uh, more gigish, if you put it like that. And if a developer, an average developer makes an application uh, for this kind of audience uh, that is important permissions uh, one more point from and starting from android 6 you may have dynamic permissions by location for example why do we need an address book a classical thing for the geo applications why address book because uh from at on some at some point uh, you would like to send your location to your friend and to choose a friend you need an address book and then then it works so please go to dynamic permissions in apple they always had they have always been dynamic open street maps what what about map box yes of course many companies uh, that use open street map i know personally all of them all the companies that use open street maps are in the same boat because we depend on the quality of data how do you monetize all that uh, we don't have any monetization now if uh, we insert monetization so we shall earn some money for mailru group but we're growing fast without any monetization now we're growing by hundreds of percent so our strategy is fast growth first of all uh, we do not focus on monetization we're focusing on growth how are we going to monetize it in future we shall offer additional services value add services if you want to get from point a to point b you can go on foot on public transport on taxi on your personal car so we shall do something like that uh, if we develop uh, a paid application what about a free demo version with limited functionality that was our model uh, there are some pros and cons uh, cons when uh, you have to upgrade you have to go to app store again and do something again today i would say rather no than yes uh, try to make we try to make it free from the very beginning and then try to monetize through advertising or plan some other monetization uh, features premium subscriptions or something like that in future do we need free version yes we can you can even start with a free ap application you have a lot of competition yandex uh, some others they offer online maps why did you decide to play in this highly competitive market good question yeah, I try to answer it very often. Double Geese and Yandex are not our competitors because they work in a territory which is less than 10% of our market. Uh, our cross section is we is only 10%. We compete in 10% of the market. Open street map one day will become one single best source of data about our planet. And we would like to be part of the game. Not Yandex, not GIS are maps for double uh, for our open street map. Uh, they are proprietary. They will hardly use open street map. <coughs> 
maps are not very competitive because if you don't see anything in one map you use something else for example some people use yandex in russia and open street map or google otherwise so there are some cross sections but we, we see people installing different maps on one device look osm is not your own product right uh, are you afraid of your team of the group changing its policy one day <coughs> osm is not a separate team it's a community of people uh, we have an osm foundation uh, there is an open license for, for example if linux torvalds uh, go mad goes mad and says i forget uh, prohibit everything it wouldn't affect anyone the idea of open street map is the same as linux if we all go mad the data is available freely available everywhere so nothing would change we have just a couple of more minutes no questions let us thank the speaker